Welcome to Planet Sleep. I'm your host, Josh. And tonight, we'll be traveling to one of the natural wonders of the world, the Grand Canyon. To call it grand is an understatement. The beauty within this natural park might bring a thousand descriptive words to mind, and grand is only one of them. Regardless, it's time to step inside, or perhaps fly above, this mystical crevice within the earth. Before we begin our journey through the Grand Canyon, wanted to remind you that an easy way to support Planet Sleep is to simply subscribe on YouTube, follow us on Spotify, or subscribe on Apple Podcasts. Also, this episode of Planet Sleep is brought to you by BetterHelp and Helix Sleep. More on that in a moment. But before we begin this adventure, let's take a few minutes to just calm down. If you're standing up or walking around, find somewhere to sit down that's comfortable. Or even better yet, find somewhere to lie down. It's good to get our heads straight before the long journey ahead. While you're at it, Take a few deep breaths in through the nose and out through the mouth. And just listen to the music in the background. And listen to your own breathing for just a few moments. I'll wait. Now that we're chill, let the journey to planet sleep begin. A deep gash in the planet, a river's revelation of six million years, carved into the rock layers of our planet's history. The Grand Canyon stands as a testament to the ultimate power and beauty of Mother Nature. This colossal display of water, earth, and wildlife plays alongside the history of the United States. And as explorers uncovered the hidden gems of the New World, their breathtaking discoveries revealed that these lands were actually gems of an incredibly old world. And the artistic works of Mother Nature require ages, patience, When this bit of earth was recognized by European explorers in the 1800s, they uncovered America from sea to shining sea. But this one specific region remained mostly uncharted. What we now call the Grand Canyon once had a different name. The Paiute indigenous people had given it the name Kaibab or Kaibab, which means the mountain lying down. Many of their people considered the Colorado River a sacred stream of water and its landscape was a death sentence for anyone who tried to cross it. But aside from its danger, this stretch of land quickly became acknowledged as one of the seven natural wonders of the world. Archaeological artifacts suggest that people have lived in and around the canyon for nearly 12,000 years, and today it's still considered a sacred place to 11 Native American tribes. All tribes were moved to reservations in the 1800s, and many never recovered their land. So after the U.S. government recognized this land as a potential place for profit, they removed the inhabitants who had lived there for thousands of years. One of the most famous tribes to live here were the Pueblo people. Despite the brutal terrain and limited water, they grew crops in the canyon and stored their grain for winter. The native plants and animals provided additional food. 
They also harvested the fibers from the yucca plant to weave cords, rope, and sandals. They shaped stones to create building materials, grindstones, axes, and arrowheads. Ruins of their former homes can still be found throughout the region. Remains of 800-year-old villages are made of stone walls that have since toppled over, but their foundations still stand strong. Some of their structures were even built into the sides of the canyon. While most of their time was spent outdoors to socialize and work, during the cold winter seasons they were forced inside their small homes. They told stories around campfires and passed them down from generation to generation. Through these ancient stories, we've pieced together the history of the region long before the European settlers arrived. When the United States first obtained this land, they sent an expedition to explore the area in 1857. It was led by Lieutenant Joseph Ives, and he claimed that the region was profitless. He believed his expedition would be the last group of white people to ever visit the region, since there was no money to be made there. But in time, history proved him wrong. By the 1900s, the Grand Canyon became a tourist hotspot. A railway was built straight to the canyon, and the nation as a whole saw how incredible this natural land was. Its terrain was mind-blowing. Its geology looked like a foreign planet. And it wasn't long before this region became the 17th National Park in the United States. To humans, this vast and rugged terrain might be incredibly difficult to traverse. But for wildlife, they call this home. As you carefully move along the flat edge of the canyon, brown and beige spots of activity move along the rocks on the opposite side of the river. With curling horns and jet black eyes, the bighorn sheep thrive in this extreme geography. Their balance is bar none, and their agility allows them to move across the rocks. You wish you had the same grace as them as they easily run along the edges of the canyon down towards the floor. In other areas of the region where the land is much more accessible, the bighorn sheep struggle to survive. The competition of the land was too much, but here in the difficult terrain of the canyon below, not many other animals can manage. So this great canyon has protected the bighorn sheep for ages, and they're one of the few mammals that can survive down here. They move quickly along the rocks, and while they get along for the most part, when the mating season comes around, the females attract attention. The males known as rams become extremely competitive, and they spar to see who wins. They'll bash their horns together in a clash of energy, and as they wrestle, they'll swing their stiff arms towards each other like swords. Those with the biggest horns usually have the upper hand. Some sets of horns can weigh up to 30 pounds, and the largest ones are seen as a status symbol among the herd. They'll use their strong legs to charge at one another and ram their horns together. Sometimes they'll stand on their back two legs to rear up before colliding and their skulls have two sets of bone to protect their brain from the forceful head smashing. Despite the pain, they'll keep sparring for up to 24 hours at a time. Sometimes, they move their fights down into the canyon. Other times, they fight on the rim at the top. And once the dust settles, the winner gets the mate. But they need to be careful near the top. They're not as safe as they once were down in the difficult terrain because up here, the predators thrive on flat land. In the distance, you hear the sharp, high-pitched call of a mountain lion. What sounds like a large bird is actually the call of a big-fanged meat-eater, and the land up here is much easier to move through. Although they mostly move at night, sometimes they make rare daytime hunts. You steer clear of the lion's call as it echoes across the rocky terrain. Its territory is large, so you can only hope this wild cat is on the opposite side of the rocky divide. This dangerous animal is another reason you wish you could harness the power of a bird and safely fly in the air above the canyon. This mountain lion has been given many names. The cougar, puma, and ghost cat. This lion is the fourth largest cat in the world. As it sneaks through the brown and green brush, its shoulder blades move up and down. 
It keeps its head towards the ground as it sniffs for its next meal. It slowly sets its paws along jagged steps as it patrols the rim of the canyon. Its large ears turn front to back as it listens for the snap of a twig underneath the hoof of a bighorn. And if it can find one on flat terrain where it can outrun its meal, this wild cat will feast. It typically chooses the finest cut of meat to eat before hauling the carcass into a hiding spot or leaving it for scavengers. And not only will it feast, it will also have a great view of the beautiful canyon below as it dines. Before we continue our journey through the Grand Canyon, take a moment to thank Helix Sleep for sponsoring today's episode. For me, sleep is absolutely crucial, especially now that I have an infant. I crave every little bit of sleep I can get. And one thing that has greatly improved the quality of my sleep, that is the Helix Mattress. Helix Sleep is a premium mattress brand that provides tailored mattresses based on your unique sleep preferences. The Helix lineup includes 14 unique mattresses, including a collection of luxury models, a mattress for big and tall sleepers, and even a mattress made just for kids. So how will you know which Helix mattress works best for you and your body? Well, you take the Helix sleep quiz and find your perfect mattress in under two minutes. And what's great is your personalized mattress is shipped straight to your door free of charge. And Helix knows there's no better way to test out a new mattress than by sleeping on it in your own home. That's why they offer a 100 night risk-free trial. Try out your new Helix mattress, see how your body adjusts. And if you decide it's not the best fit, you're welcome to return for a full refund. Because everybody's unique, everybody likes a different thing. For me, I sleep on my side a lot, so I like to have a more cushiony top. Plus, I love Helix Sleep's mattresses cooling features that help keep my body cool throughout the night with their hybrid design. I ended up getting the Helix Hybrid Midnight Lux mattress and it has absolutely changed my world and my quality of sleep. I've tried a lot of different mattresses out there, but Helix Sleep is by far the most comfortable mattress. It has just the right amount of softness so that you sink in just a little bit, but it's firm enough that you don't feel like you're swimming inside your mattress. What's great too is that Helix mattresses are American made and come with a 10 or 15 year warranty depending on the model. And again, remember you can try it out for 100 nights risk free If you don't want to take my word for it, Helix has been awarded the number one mattress picked by GQ and Wired Magazine. It is even recommended by multiple leading chiropractors and doctors of sleep medicine as a go-to solution for improving your sleep. And right now, Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners, and their pillows are amazing, like sleeping on clouds. Just go to helixsleep.com slash planetsleep. With Helix, better sleep starts now. A mile-long view to the bottom. Ridges of red and orange rock create uneven steps towards the depths below. Sediment builds up towards the canyon floor. The winding Colorado River carves the deepest spot, forever shaping the canyons as the centuries pass. At its narrowest point, the canyon is 600 feet across, and at its widest, it's 18 miles across. It seems nearly impossible that this river carved the canyon. From the top, the river looks like a tiny trickle of muddy water in a massive geological landscape. While the river has carved much of the canyon, other forces of nature have also been at work for millions of years. This river was how the canyon became connected over time, nearly five million years ago. Before that, it's believed that the canyon was carved by many other forms of erosion such as ice, wind, earthquakes, and rain. But nearly five million visitors come to see its beauty every year. But because of its incredibly difficult terrain, not many make it past the lookouts with guardrails and pavement. Still, people like the Havasupai have lived in and around the Grand Canyon South Rim for the past 800 years. 
They've spent the hot summer months growing crops and tending to their orchards down in Havasu Canyon. In the winter, they hunted for food along the plateau, and their presence has left behind trails that are still used as hiking trails to this day. In 1882, the U.S. government created a reservation for the tribe. It was 518 acres at the bottom of the canyon, an area that stretched 5 miles long and 12 miles wide. Ever since they were forced to move to this location, they suffered greatly. 90% of their land had been taken away from them, and they were used to migrating during the seasons between the canyon floor and the plateau above. But after their removal, they struggled to find food and it wasn't until 1975 that they finally got their land back, all 185,000 acres. Today, there are about 650 living members who live here, and the only way to access the reservation is through an eight-mile hike through the wildlife and the beautiful natural waterfalls. Unlike this tribe, many of the others never had their land returned to them. As you wander the south rim of the canyon, a green forest covers the highest point. You can see why this was a valuable place for hunting and gathering. A healthy area of vegetation fills the land. Although it's not used for hunting anymore, the animals still thrive from the forest food. And as you cross over rock in between trees, you come to a dead pine with bare branches. It sticks out like a sore thumb between the greenery. And although it stands dead and dreary, its trunk is spotted with activity. Through the forest, you hear the knocking of a hard break against dry wood. An acorn woodpecker drills into the side of the dead pine. And as you get closer to the dead tree, you see thousands of holes have been poked into the trunk. Every inch has been bored out with neat holes, and the woodpecker has filled the holes with acorns. This tree, in fact, has become one massive storage unit for the woodpecker. Each hole has been drilled for the acorns, and the woodpecker must find the perfect shape to fit the perfect nut. Its large talons cling to the tree, hopping from one home to the next. An acorn hangs between its pointy beak, and a red patch of hair sits on its head. The rest of its body is a silky sheen of black and white underbelly. Several males and females share this large tree for storage. They all make deposits and guard the tree together as a team. Other threats come up to the clear blue sky that hangs above the canyon. Black ravens circle above waiting for an opening in the defense, but the woodpeckers spread out along the tree covering every inch with the defense of their keen eyes. But the thieves also come from below. In the rocky soil of the rim, squirrels hop their way through the forest and they understand how the acorn storage system works. They wander around the base of the tree, waiting for an opening, if any. And when the moment comes, the squirrel reaches for its lowest hole, snatching an acorn or as many as they can. They quickly shove the acorn into their cheek and try to snag another if they have time. But if they're caught, one of the woodpeckers begins chirping, and the storage alarm has gone off. A woodpecker swoops down from a high branch swats at the squirrel with its large talons. Back and forth, the woodpecker sweeps across the air, smacking the squirrel as it crosses, until finally the squirrel has had enough. He retreats back to the ground and flees the forest, but he won't be gone forever. The dead pine is an oasis of food, and the woodpecker's neighbors won't quickly forget. As you watch the birds fly through the air, patrolling the tree. You wish you had the same freedom in the skies above the canyon. They are the only ones who get the perfect view, and the difficult terrain below means nothing to them. Unlike the cougar, the bighorn sheep, or the average tourist, the birds can go wherever they please. You're trapped here under the control of gravity, bound to the two feet planted on the dusty ground. With jealousy, you look up in the sky and see one of the rarest birds in the world coursing across the big blue sky. The California condor. This bird was on the verge of extinction, but defied all odds against it. A strip of white colors trails the undersides of their wings, while the rest of them is mostly black. 
at the ends of their wings. Their feathers spread like fingers, giving them a distinct look in the sky. And since it's a vulture, it has a distinct bald head with a downward curving beak. Its wingspan stretches 10 feet across, making it the largest bird in North America. And it weighs up to 26 pounds. From its size, you might even think it's closer to a dinosaur than a bird. And they almost had the exact same fate of extinction many years ago. By 1987, only 27 of them were left in the wild. In a desperate attempt to save the species, biologists captured every single one of them. Luckily, they're one of the longest living birds, living up to 60 years old. The biologists bred the healthy birds in captivity, and by 1992, they began releasing them back into the wild. Each bird is tagged with a big number on their wings to keep track of them. And some were released near the Grand Canyon, where they hadn't lived in nearly 70 years. But today, nearly 70 condors can be witnessed soaring the skies above the Grand Canyon. These majestic birds are considered sacred by many Native American cultures. In the mythology of the Wyo tribe, this bird was their ancestor. The beginning of their experience came from this bird, and other tribes believed that the condor has healing properties. And their feathers have been used in traditional medicine ceremonies. Some tribes even have a condor dance used in their tribal dance traditions. So as this bird flies over the canyon once again, it's a victory for its species and preserves the ancient culture of the land. If only you could do the same as the condor twisting and twirling with ease above the dangerous rocks below. You imagine yourself as a great bird with a 10 foot wingspan, each feather spread wide open. And like a dream, your imagination manifests into reality. Your arms stretch further and further, and the wings of black feathers form across your body. You feel weightless and strong. Your vision sharpens, and your endurance builds. Your feet turn into mighty talons, and within a moment you achieve the strength and shape of a mighty condor. At the edge of the canyon, you jump to your freedom, not to the depths below, but into the sweeping winds above. You fly with outstretched arms, becoming one of the birds. And finally, you are untethered from your human legs, stuck to the ground. With a true bird's eye view, the canyon curves through endless rock. Clumps of green, beige, and red follow their strange natural structures along the river's path of erosion. And the small flow of brown water at its bottom continues to flow. Its waters reflect the sunlight. From the direction of this light, you get your bearings and head north. An upswell of warm wind carries you to the edge of the canyon. And here the region changes drastically. Beyond the canyon, the land looks nothing like before. If you didn't know any better, the north rim of the canyon looks like the Great Plains of the Midwest. Fields of grass cover the long stretches of flat land, and a massive forest of trees reaches in even height for miles. Before we conclude our journey, take a moment to thank our last sponsor, BetterHelp. It's important to take care of your body, but it's even more important to take care of your mind. Whether you just had something happen in your life that may have been tragic or traumatic, or maybe you're just wrestling with something that you really need a third party's perspective on, well, all of those things can be addressed with online therapy. Better yet, doing online therapy through BetterHelp is the easiest and most convenient way to get therapy from the comfort of your own home. BetterHelp is online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat only therapy sessions, so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. I love the online therapy because it's so easy to not only get an appointment with a therapist, but it's so easy to try out multiple therapists, all while being at home until you find the right fit for you. What's great about BetterHelp is it's much more affordable than an in-person therapy session, and you can be matched with the therapist in under 48 hours. 
It's really therapy with all of the convenience. Therapy is such an important thing. I've personally gone through therapy for a long time to deal with childhood trauma. And I gotta say, I don't think I would have been able to move past all of it without it. Therapy can also be great for just talking to somebody. And BetterHelp makes it super easy to find a therapist in under 48 hours. And right now our listeners can get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash planet sleep. That's better H E L P dot com slash planet sleep. But as we continue our journey, a hybrid of bison and cattle tread through the open plains. Grasshoppers spring out from their pathway, afraid of getting trampled. Impatient hawks wait for their moment to strike the grasshoppers once the bison pass through. This northern region is alive with wildlife. While most think of the Grand Canyon as a place of impossible rocky terrain and geology, the National Park contains these long stretches of land where animals run free. The wildlife here is protected, and they thrive without the trampling of mankind. The only trampling they need to watch out for is the hybrid bison's hooves. Patrolling the skies above, you feel the afternoon sun warm up the top side of your back feathers. The upward wind keeps you afloat as you soar along the canyon's edge. As you soar, you notice a few ravens catch up with you. They fly up behind your large wings, and they draft in your slipstream. They're intelligent and lazy, but you don't mind. As you feel weightless and calm, you're the strongest bird in the sky. Along the canyon's edge, you spot a set of small switchbacks that wind down the side towards the canyon floor. For hundreds of years after Europeans discovered the canyon, few ever imagined crossing its terrain and its river on foot. But knowing the stubbornness of mankind, exploration was inevitable. They carved these switchbacks into the canyon walls. Nothing would stop them from exploring the depths of the canyon. To this day, Pack mules are still the best way to reach the bottom. A line of brown mules carrying stuffed bags can be seen trudging down the switchbacks. The clomp of their hooves echoes across the canyon. Slowly but surely, they make their way down. And legend has it, from top to bottom, the climb is as diverse as the terrain from Mexico to Canada. Bighorn sheep watch the mules kick up dust. They're not used to seeing many strangers down here in the trudges of steep rock, so they keep their young sheep a safe distance away from the switchbacks. One of the only menaces the wildlife is used to down here are the creatures that are difficult to see. They blend in with the terrain, and even with your bird's eye view, you struggle to see the danger waiting between rocks. Curled up in the shade of a red rock, the Grand Canyon rattlesnake patiently tucks itself away in the dark. It's evolved over time, and its scales have begun to match the crimson red hue of the canyon rocks. Its beige eyes flare outwards with thin black slits at their center. They sit on either side of a diamond-shaped head. Connected to the head is a strong, lengthy body that coils around itself. As much as it hides away in the terrain, it doesn't want to be bothered. Even if you can't see it, you'll hear its tail as it rattles to warn predators and travelers off. The tiny muscles towards its tail fire at 50 times per second, which are some of the fastest muscles known to man. The red rocks come alive with a rapid rattle, and if anything gets too close, this pit viper can inject the toxic venom from its fangs when it bites. They'll typically try to escape and hide before biting, but if they're ever caught in a corner, they'll fight their way out in a frenzy. Thankfully, you fly safely in the sky above. The mules stick to their man-made trails, and the bighorns wander off towards the river for a cool drink. Down here, you get a better view of the Colorado River. Its slow-moving waters continue carving the canyons to this day. From above, ice loosens the rocks. Winds carry it down the canyon, while rain and river wash it all downstream. 
this process is extremely slow, but it's shaped this canyon for centuries. The river carves away the earth by the thickness of a single sheet of paper every year. At the slowest part of the river, the canyon and its wildlife lives in peace. But the heat is incredible. The sun beats on your wings. And even in the shade, the heat is unbearable. It can reach up to 120 degrees in the hottest months. Luckily, the best way to survive down here is to have wings. You watch as a group of violent green swallows swoop down from the cliff face beside the river. Sometimes they simply touch the surface and stick their beaks in to get a quick drink. Their talons might graze the surface, leaving a ripple in the water. Other times, if the heat is too strong, they'll dunk their bodies into the river. White sprinkles of water splash up into the air as their bodies collide with the surface. Although you're now a bird much larger than a swallow, you're getting desperately hot in this section of the canyon. You want to try this technique out for yourself. So you tuck your big wings towards your sides and let your body fall towards the river. The wind begins to cool you down as you pick up speed. Your body feels like a rock falling ever closer to the surface. Closer and closer, gravity pulls you towards the river. Yet just before reaching the water, you cast your wings out to the side. You slow down right as you break the water's surface. Your talons crash with cool water and you wriggle your body through the very top of the earthy river. You're careful not to submerge yourself too much. The water weight would make it hard to fly, and you don't want to give up this freedom of flight just yet. So you splash yourself with just enough to cool down. The water sprinkles on top of your large, bald condor head, and you drag your talons through the expanses of cool liquid. With your muscles, you flap your wings as they carry you back up into the air. All the while, the swallows watch you curiously. They've never seen a bird your size go for a dive, but they're impressed. They understand how hot it gets here, but they can withstand the heat much better than you. And in the winter, when the canyon cools down, they'll migrate south towards the Mexican heat, and they'll use the Colorado River as a rough map to lead them there. Here above the river, everything seems gentle and welcoming to the nearby wildlife. But in different locations, the river isn't as welcoming. Its slow, muddy waters can transform into surging white rapids around sudden corners. Its force has even cost many people their lives before. Although the wildlife survives down here near the canyon floor, they're smart enough to avoid the areas of unrelenting water. The birds competent enough to dive and hunt for fish in these dangerous waters know how to navigate them safely, like the osprey. A bird that has such powerful eyes they can spot fish swimming in the murky waters below. They have the strength to drive into powerful waters, snatch fish, and emerge into the air again. With their talons, they carry their catch to a safe location before eating. On the other hand, the ravens that feed near the river know they aren't strong enough to snatch fish from the powerful river, so they will use their brains over brawn. Known as a great trickster, the ravens perch on nearby rocks. Their jet black feathers glisten in the sun, and they hatch their plans in silence. As they watch the other birds catch fish, they wait for them to bring the food ashore. Once perched on a nearby rock, they wait for the perfect moment to swoop in and steal the fish. So if the intelligent ravens know not to test their strength in the rapids of the Colorado River, many others should take note. As danger courses through the bottom of the canyon, the river continues to give life to almost everything and everyone that lives here. Its raw force can take away life, but it also provides. Its water continues to offer the canyon its greenery and nurturing food. In turn, the greenery retains the moisture and the clouds return to water through the rain. This cycle continues to form the beautiful canyons below. And like many natural wonders, its time here is not permanent. This is only a brief cosmic glimpse into the beauty of an ever-changing region. The river balances itself on a perfect cycle. The canyons hang beneath a meticulous plateau. The wildlife carefully appreciates the harmony of both the land and its water. And during your brief time in flight, you don't take any of this for granted. 
with each gust of hot wind beneath your wings, you take in each section of land, each division from rim to rim. The sparkling sunlight illuminates the river into a beam of water beneath you, and you follow this light along its path. And as you take each turn with ease, carving the wind with your wings, you follow the bright waters below, hoping its pathway never ends. With that, that concludes our journey to Planet Sleep for tonight. I hope you enjoyed this adventure through the Grand Canyon. By this point, I hope that you're fast asleep or you're very close to falling asleep. Take care. And rest easy. I'll see you next time in our next adventure to Planet Sleep. Sleep easy, my friends. <laughs>